but then I, hey, I could brother. sort of see as something white. I know, I know you didn't know this, but I don't blame you. I guess I probably should have mentioned it to you. But uh, he's supposed to do these boards now bigger to accept HGs, but this is, I guess, an older board. So, uh, yeah, these don't just drop in. Yes, I could take a flat head screwdriver or something and push them in. That's a no-no, man. Because if you ever try to pull them out to check them, you don't want to be putting tension on these on the uh, leads, you know. So. Uh, sometimes I still have to do this to even new boards I get. So yeah, I'm having to tear down the whole box, bro. I hate that. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I'm just unsoldering everything. I'm about to take the switch off right here. And uh, also during shipment, but you may remember this uh, or not, but back here. This got bent out. I took the hammer and a plate and pushed and got it beat back in, so it's definitely a lot better than it was now. So I got that beat beat uh, back out for you. So pretty much flat now. So, but all right, brother. I still got to add a couple more components here and uh, speed back circuits and drop the old C's in there. I, I actually just purchased these straight from Fat Boy. I didn't get quite enough money from you because I thought I was going to be getting them from myself. What? I thought I was going to be buying them myself from my own source, but I wasn't able to. But it's all gravy, bud. Alright, I'm going to get this thing done, man. Get all this broke down and get these uh, holes a little bit bigger. With a Dremel, so I can drop them in. All right, bud. Get this disconnecting here. Doing a video. Huh? Well, don't give it to me out here. I'm not putting it in my pocket out here. Take it there, and I'll we'll deal with it tomorrow, okay, bud? All right, man. Uh, here, here. I was wanting to share something with you. By the way, pretty cool, man. Never seen anybody do that. That's one thing I like about you, dude. You come up with some cool stuff I never even thought of. I know why you did that, so that this would sit flush. There wouldn't be no pressure at all on the board. But uh, talk about these relays, man. I watched the show recently these relays are absolute trash. I'm just going to be honest with you. These are the relays with the LEDs in them, right? Oh. I bought... I literally bought... 100 of these relays I thought they were so neat because they have uh, LEDs in them I was taking them and actually taking the LEDs out of them and putting like blue LEDs in there and different color LEDs so it light up real good when you keyed up brighter LEDs with uh, better um, smaller resistors on so they get bright I'm not telling a lie when I tell you this. At least, at least six out of ten of these relays would fail. Six out of ten. It was that big of a deal. Maybe more than that. I just didn't have the customers tell me. After about four or five of these relays messed up and they all had the same exact problem, I quit using them immediately. I've actually uh, gave a lot of them away to people and told them they don't need to use it for RF. But uh, the problem is, is this, the little button right here, it's on the actual contact, the copper button, you see that? I don't know if heat does it or what, but that button will start to get to where it separates from the actual contact 
to where you can spin it. And the biggest problem that I would have with these is you would key up, unkey, and all of a sudden your receive wouldn't come back because it, it, it literally was still it wasn't making connection uh, with, with the contact below it because that, that button is what makes the connection and they do not have that button connected to these leads good enough okay now and I'm not kidding man I've, I've at least had that happen to at least six seven eight amps before I quit using them and and uh, shoot it wasn't too long ago a guy sent an amp uh, well, one of my builds in where the relay had fell for him I've even tried to get in there and tried to change uh, like try to solder those buttons but I just can't do it oh I was going to show you so then I moved to these these are the shiznit my man and they cost the same amount of money You may not be able to see this in the camera. These are JQX 13S. JQX 13S. If you look in here, they uh, almost almost look like they're identical to the other one. But if you look in there good enough, let's see if I can zoom in here. There we go. But if you look in here at the contact, the buttons on here, they are different than the other relays. They are different. These are actually put on right. Same size 10 amp relays. I got a piece of double sided sticky tape right here. JQX 13F. This is the same company that I actually use for all my relays now, man. Just like these, you'll see old Danny using these. Seven to eight dollars a relay. You absolutely cannot beat that price anywhere. Dude, this is by easy a twenty dollar relay. I mean, shoot, you can sell this relay for 30 bucks and I wouldn't say it's too much this is a 40 amp relay man I could actually take this relay right here this relay right here and I could actually put this relay on a 300 amp power supply and use this relay to, to, to put the 220 to a uh, 300 amp power supply this thing will handle up to 40 amps of current it's actually a good relay to do that with these are the shiznit, man. I love using these things. For bigger boxes, of course. You get them from China, seven, eight bucks. You get them from the U.S., they're going to be more, of course. Just want to show that to you, man. And of course, the 30 amp ones with the with a base at the bottom, the metal base. You've seen those. Alrighty. All right, man. I just want to tell you that I did notice though. But this relay is a uh, three-pole double throw, and you've got two of them tied together on the output. Uh, I mean, we'll roll. I was thinking about just getting there and taking it out, man. But look, I, I, I beat up the time over here, dude. I, I don't even, I don't even know what, what. I don't even know what we worked out with this thing, man. It's supposed to have been the amp that was going to be like mine and yours, but. I didn't get to invest in it like I wanted to. I was supposed to actually buy the pills myself and we were going to build this together and it was going to be both our amps, but my broke A couldn't do it. So I don't know what we're going to work out with me getting this all put together for you. Just hope it works good. If I get it all put together and it don't work good, you probably ain't going to pay me nothing. <laughs> all right, man, we'll see. I'm going to get this put, put up. I'll be back. 2879C, six of them. Listen to some of that Sasquatch Chronicles. I'm gone. Alright, brother. We all done with this Joker man. Got this thing all sewed up for you. Got some bad news, though, man. 
didn't work brother not enough isolation between the ports and I'm gonna show you what I mean here in just a minute you would think this would work but the problem is I don't know what core ferrite this is but uh, there's not enough inductance you would think there would be I mean it you can't always go with the old sharpie trick with ferrite that's just kind of a, a reference if you ain't got nothing else to use but there's just not enough inductance to uh, keep the isolation from each uh, core literally just keying a one watt dead key all right this 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 this, this will show you what I mean here <laughs> explain a one watt dead key was enough to smoke this reason being not enough isolation cause an immediate imbalance of all three ports and at that point the ports are not doing their job and in a sense it's almost like uh, I can't give the hundred percent technical definition but basically the signals are mixing together the electromagnetic flux is, is not is, is not great enough and they're somehow mixing together which causes an immediate imbalance yeah you still get output during that time but you want all three all three of these two transistor sections to be completely isolated while they're being combined and uh, that often makes me wonder when you see some of these older boxes when they're using big long ports like this it makes me wonder if that's why they're doing it they didn't have high permeability ferrite so they kept adding, 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 adding. Let me show you what I mean here. Alright. This is what I used. Okay. This is way more than adequate for this amount of power output. Way more than adequate. Go adding more core. Won't hurt nothing. It'll just give you more inductance. But I've ran a lot of tests in uh, heat wise they might get a tad bit warm after a lot of use but um, with air hitting down on it they, they're perfect I've even seen a lot of six pills come through here just using that much on an output and that still actually works but I like to double up just to be safe so that's what we did right there is went ahead and threw you in the core that I like to use which works for me which is a real high permeability 43 all right, we're going to test just one port. That's all we need to test anyway. All right, give me a second. Let me clip this on here. Oh, man, it's the only thing about... Give me one second. Can't do this with one hand, man. I bet you're glad you hung in here with me now, man. <laughs> all right. So we're getting about 2.186 microhenries. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down one more time. Put it through the big ports. Point seven one five microhenries. That'll show you. Uh, it's all about the way the ferrite's uh, made and the mixture of the actual uh, material that it's made out of. One thing I did notice, it looks like these ends right here are a different type of core. But hey man, this is all about learning here, brother. And I'm going to tell you what, 43 that comes straight from ICA works very well. Works very good. I get my core that I'm using in this from a different place it's uh works just as just as good as the 43 from ICA this core may be 15 20 percent more inductance than the 43 from ICA and that's another thing too man you got different types of 43 out there too man but uh anyway I'm glad I bet you glad I you hung in here uh, being patient with me here man because if I'd have sent this thing back to you uh you would have had to try to figure this out it had probably just brought more headache on you man but I'm just glad to be able to help you out and figure it out for you
I'll tell you what, with these ported style designs, this right here has been my biggest issue, figuring out what port works. Now, I'll tell you what's kind of crazy about this though, okay? Now this is something I still cannot explain to save my life. I got this ferrite one time. Uh, I can't remember how many. It may have been about 50 pieces. Uh, but there were there were one inch transformers, okay, but it was not a 61 core ferrite uh, I can't quite remember where I got it from but anyway It was not a 61 core ferrite and we were using them for our output ports and input ports on the first like five or six six pills I ever did and they worked absolutely perfect, but here's the weird thing about it Once I actually checked the inductance of that core it was lower than 61. I still to this day do not understand how that was working so well. But I do remember old stick man, which who taught me to do this design. He said that just some core will work real well and some don't. You just got to run tests and figure out which core works the best for you. And uh, I think I've built close to 10 now using this core. 9 or 10, 6 pills. And it's working perfect man perfect isolation so I'll get this sent back to you if you want it and I need to make me up about four more of these because I had to use that one right there which is one I've had waiting for another build but anyway man I went ahead and added uh, instead of doing a B plus and all that I just went ahead and added some uh, thick 12 gauge Teflon uh, feeding the power to the output transformers uh, through your uh, balancer resistors up there. If you really wanted to get technical with these things, these the 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 the, the ohms of these uh, the resistance of those resistors would actually be a little bit less than a hundred. But we we've always used a hundred. I've seen guys using three one hundreds like that in parallel since the get go. <laughs> they will burn if you have an in. Uh, a mismatch and they don't draw any current at all if you do not have a mismatch and uh, you'll notice if you start driving the box too hard of course then you'll start having slightly mismatches so that's just the way it goes and they will start drawing a little bit of heat but anyway man I went ahead and uh, threw uh, two DM 19500s on top here for you and uh, we've got three nineties on the input there went ahead and wrote down the tune here and uh, believe it or not it's very similar to the regular HG 2879's input was pretty much about 180 just like the HG 2879's the output did turn out to be a little lower than the HG's uh, regular HG or you could say 2879A's uh, so it came out to about 30 pico fared lower but anyway this is just hitting it with a bench radio brother S swinging about 18 to 20 watts PEP into it 1000 watt slug do Right there about five, a little bit over 500, 520 or so, and I think we're hitting about 100 bird. Oh, right there about 100 bird. That's just hitting it with the radio, man. So I'm going to get this thing hooked up to a good supply, and uh, I'll be back. I'm going to have to pull out my little two-pill driver up there, and we'll see what this thing can do on the top end. But I'm not going to go crazy with it, man. I really do want to. I'd love to hit this thing with a three pill and put it on the two, uh, 200 amp transformer over here, but this ain't my box. Just to let everybody know, this actually was a collaboration build. I don't know if he wants me to give his name, so I'm not going to give it right here on the video here, but he basically built the box. He, he left me with just a little bit of other things like the feedback circuits the caps and, and you know power and power in the uh, transformers and the resistors and I had to uh, switch to LED leads it was wired up backwards and hey I still make that 
still make that uh, mistake to this day, brother. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some small things like that. And uh, another thing I had to do, which I think I've already mentioned, the other video was a few days ago that I did. I had to remove the board, completely remove the board off the heat sink and make the holes bigger for the pills to drop in without any resistance to that because uh, you don't want to have to beat them pills down in the hole and if you ever need to remove them pr pretty dang good chance they're going to break on you it's good to be able to have them just to slide on in there that's just what we got to do with these boards I thought he would start cutting these holes a lot bigger but uh, this may be an older board I don't know I do not know but anyway um, it was going to be a collaboration build where the basically the box is going to be half mine half his but it just didn't work out like that in the end I wasn't able to uh, at, at the time in the end it just basically worked out to where it's just going to be his build which is completely fine I'm, I'm hey man I'm pri privileged to be able to do my first uh, six build 2879C uh, uh, collaboration build and get to tune it out and everything so it's a lot of fun your output here I didn't have no door knobs this right here is way more than adequate dude I've got a lot of six pills out there actually running these uh, these uh, really hardcore capacitors here these are actually three kilovolt capacitors are these three kilovolt yeah three kilovolts capacitors so we're sitting here with about a hundred and eighteen pico farad at six thousand volts way more than adequate brother all right, man, we'll be back. Let's put some drive in this thing, see what she's going to do. All right, brother. Like I said, I'm getting this thing quick and get out. I ain't going to sit here and stay on the key, playing around, etc. Because, uh, you know, these are brand new transistors. This is your box. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. I'd love to hook that radio up right there on it, man. That cover 29 right there, I guarantee you this thing do at least 12 1300 bird i know it would but we just gonna hit it with two 1446s and see what we get out of it all right i'm gonna show both meters at once that's the thousand watt scale thousand watt slug excuse me an rms 2500 watt slug pep go so that was 1500 watts PEP. I didn't even look at the RMS. We'll hit it one more time real quick. I ain't even gonna get back on it, man. I'm gonna let you have fun with this yourself without bringing the gain down on these transistors. Ooh. So I didn't even see what it was. I was looking over here at the voltage, just dropping at about 14.8 volts. But all right, man. There you go, she's working. And it still can handle more drive than that, that's for sure. But dude, if this was my six pill, man, I mean, come on, this thing's doing 1500 already. <laughs> I usually can get 15 to 1800 out of just regular six pills with this design. But you gotta keep in mind, every one of these transistors right here is a 2879 and a half so technically this is let's see here every two transistors equals three so this is equivalent to one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's equivalent to a nine pill so we're seeing 100 bird per pill, 1500 pp, 14.8 volts, and she still can be driven harder. That is 8 watts RMS drive, by the way. If you hit it with your stick, man, you got over there that you got for me, which I think is a 12 watt radio. and. You can have some fun with it, man. I'd love to sit here and just bang this thing, man. God, I really want to. I'm going to have to wait and build my own uh, box with C's in it and play around with it, beat the heck out of it, and sell it. 
because I really do want to push these things to their max. But if I was to build this for myself, man, she. I'd run that thing about 600 bird, about 12, 1300 peak. That thing lasts you a lifetime. Two 1446s, y'all. Just two little puny little 1446s. 800 bird, 1500 peak. And I'm good and gone now. Gotta get these fans wired up, man. I know that's something you can do yourself. I may just ship it on back to you like that, or I may wire them bad boys up for you, man. We'll see how nice I'm feeling. <laughs> Mr. MC, your homeboy, the GK. We'll see you, big brother. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I know it took forever. Bye-bye.